how's it going? I was making a video just now. After about 50 minutes of yapping into the microphone, I got to the editing stage and realized that OBS has frozen on me. So all that work went down the drain and I thought to just ride the wave of rage that I'm feeling right now and make my belated 2,222 subscribers special responding to hate mail from viewers. Poise. Oh, no. Honestly, I feel like I don't get enough hate on YouTube and other social media. I wish I got more, not only because hatred fuels me, but because I think negative feedback can be just as constructive. It can show me what I'm doing wrong. Sometimes you learn a lot from negative comments as well. So please keep them coming. So let's get to it and let's start with the first one here. This is from my tap to transient Pro Tools style video. Me, you call this teaching, you move so fast and assume so much viewer prior knowledge about the doll in question that it makes this a very annoying experience. You dare call yourself an audio teacher? Jesus Christ. Well, this comment was kind of an annoying experience to be honest. First of all, I never called this teaching. This is a tutorial. Don't conflate teaching with tutorials. Teaching is an interactive experience. I can't just be talking to you and teaching you stuff. You have to be talking back to me, asking questions. So really the way a tutorial will cross the line into teaching is for there to be some viewer interaction. And if you want to interact with a teacher, be fucking polite about it. Don't be coming at me with that kind of attitude when I give you free tutorials, you asshole. And also please go to anybody who you call a teacher, hop into their class in the middle of the program and start whining about them moving too fast and see how they respond to that. I'd love to see that. That video overall is a lot slower than most of my videos. So if that's too fast for you, well, get the fuck out of here. This is not for you. The <laughs> nerve at his prick. And also, if you do want me to hold your hand, please pay me and I'll be happy to do that. While it's free tutorials, I do what I want. And if you want, you can watch it and I hope you learn from it. You can ask me follow up questions if you want. And otherwise, there's the door. Don't let it hit you where God split you. This one is in response to my real launcher slash retrospective record video. You know, at the beginning, I didn't mind this comment too much. I thought, okay, well, yeah, this is not game changing. This is just how you make titles in YouTube. The formula is you put a number, you put a hyped up adjective in all caps and you put the rest of the title that's just how it works and I decided to try it and guess what the title worked this is currently my fastest rising video of all time and I've been making videos forever and not using this formula so there's something to it but also later on I was binging Dan Worrell and I saw that this dude leaves negative comments on Dan Worrell's videos and then I was like oh you're just an asshole okay I see don't get hung up on the title it's just designed for the algorithm it's not for your human brain use your human brain to discern what information is useful to you and if my information isn't I'm truly sorry I hope to do better I'm trying Trying to learn on the job, all right? This was uh, on my editing hotkeys video and truly one of the dumber things that I've heard ever. I get that you're solving a need, but why not just be better at podcasting and not um and uh all the time? That should be the real goal. What is this guy talking about? First of all, if podcasters didn't um and uh, I would not have a gig. I only have a gig because people um and uh and people want to speak off the cuff. I don't care what the real goal is. I get jobs from other people. I don't have a podcast. I edit podcasts for other people. But also this is just a really weird mindset that goes on in the audio industry. Whenever you're editing something or whenever you're tuning vocals, people come and think that editing is like a replacement for bettering yourself and your performance. And that's not really the case. Whether you realize it or not, everything that you see and hear in movies and music is an illusion. This is not a sport. There's no doping. There's no cheating. You can do whatever you want as long as you create the illusion that you want to create. And when it comes to editing guitars or tuning vocals, people are just irrational. They heard something somewhere, they half understood it, and now they just go and bleh, regurgitate it everywhere. What is vocal tuning? It's just voice resynthesis. Why is that illegal? Why isn't vocoder illegal? Also, why is that where we draw the line? Why can't I put reverb on a singer and nobody comes to me and goes, well, really what you should be doing is instead of recording in the vocal booth is to go to a cathedral. Or why tune vocals? Why not just sing better? Well, why don't we all shit in a bucket? It's called technology. If you really start to get into what a complex process vocal tuning is compared to whatever non-existent contribution people like you have had to the audio society, I find myself falling on team vocal tuning. So really, just everybody who complains about editing and tuning performances, you just don't know what you're talking about and you don't know how records are made. I'm sorry. And if you want to fight me, please fight me below. I'll be here all day. <laughs> all right, this next one is an email. I'll leave it on the screen if you want to read it in full. I'm not in the mood to read it in full. But what truly kind of strikes me is that this person saw one of my videos, presumably. From there, they went to my website, scrolled all the way down to where it says my email, and then they sent me an email. No hi, 
no subject, just immediately launching into this misspelled, horrible grammar diatribe that I barely understand. But in case like me, you're not in the mood to read this thing in full, here's the gist of it. Why do you teach production when your music sounds so shitty? You should be ashamed of your music and of your Chanel. <laughs> Now, see, I got to take a little bit of an issue with this. I think this is a very unfair comment. First of all, if you think my music sounds shitty, I'm not going to argue with you. Good and shitty are subjective things. I'm not going to argue with you on whether my production is good or bad. I am proud of the production that I do, not because it is good, but because I work hard on it and I'm not lazy about it. As long as I put the maximum amount of effort that I can put into a project within the bounds of my sanity and within the given time frame that I have for any project, I will be happy with with that result because I worked that hard. But forgetting all, all, all of that, none of that is why this comment is unfair. This comment is unfair because if you think about it, if you take a little bit of time to actually watch my videos, you will see that I don't actually do production tutorials. I do tutorials on the DAW. I am showing you Reaper. So it's clear from this super weird ass email that you didn't actually take too much time watching my videos. These are not production tutorials, all right? And if you want good mixing advice, I got a few channels for you. You can look at You Suck at Producing. It's an Ableton channel, but the advice is very solid. You can look at Warren Hewart. Of course, Dan Worrell, very advanced stuff. It may or may not go over your head. I'm not going to judge you based on nothing, unlike you who judged me based on literally next to no information. You should check out the awesome Kenny Joya, who's been doing kind of more and more mix-based tutorials. Always solid advice. You can check out Hi YouTube, I'm Dad, another Reaper-based mixing channel. You can look at Mastering in the Box, who does Mastering in Reaper and Studio One. There's a lot of solid people out there, and if you can't find them, at least make sure to take it out on somebody who is doing production tutorials. Thanks. I was gonna cover a bunch of hate mail that I received on Reddit once when I used the clickbait title. But you know, I'll just leave the link to that thread because I responded to everybody there. And of course, nobody responded back. But basically, this was about my track pan modes. And lots of people were accusing me of clickbait. And that just was really interesting to me because... It seems like every person on this planet is super against clickbait. Yet when I, as an experiment, did one clickbaity title in my videos, that video became my first video to hit 1,000 views in under a week. <laughs> so clearly while people say that they hate clickbait, they don't actually hate clickbait, or at least they click on clickbait. So if you don't want clickbait to be so popular, if you truly do hate clickbait, maybe don't click on it next time, eh? Maybe understand that you just letting your opinion known that you hate clickbait is what fuels clickbaits. Negative interaction with content on social media is still interaction. Understand this basic concept. If you don't like something, don't interact with it. Also revisiting that page today, I'm really sad that so many of the people who piled on the hatred on me that day are people I see around on forums and on our Discord server and stuff like that. I don't know, that just kind of ruins it for me a little bit. But whatever, Reddit is a toxic place full of assholes. So congratulations, you are part of the herd. <sighs> Thanks to all of my first 2,222 subscribers. Maybe because this one is about 500 subscribers late, I will skip a 3,333 and maybe we'll do the next special at 4,444 subscribers. At the current rate we are going, it'll be a while till we get there, I ain't gonna lie. If you wanna help me grow my channel, please kinda share my work with other people. Otherwise, take care of yourselves. As soon as I figure out this OBS garbage, I'll be back with a pretty cool tutorial that I have to at least partially reshoot. See you very soon. Thanks once again. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.